This portion of New Day Northwest is sponsored by Recovery Cafe. When it comes to addiction, part of the process is getting to recovery, but then there's the issue of staying in recovery. For more on this, I spoke to Dr. Ruby Tukoshi from Recovery Cafe, recovery coach Eva James, and Lauren Davis from the Washington Recovery Alliance. You know, recovery is such a personal journey, so every journey is um, that person's story, which means that where they start, who they're with, what their goals are, is going to differ. So having a way to respond to every person in a different way is really essential. Eva, you have recovery coaches that work. Tell me how they differ from maybe a normal counselor. Well, a, cover, a recovery coach is kind of like the bridge to the counselor or to other resources. Recovery coaches work with the person where they're at today with their problems today, such as housing, food, transportation, um, helping them get into treatment or to get to a counselor, whereas counselors have the education behind them and more or less work in their past, their past traumas and past issues. Yeah. So a coach is kind of the navigator to the other resources. Exactly. Exactly. It's easier to get to a recovery coach than it is to a counselor, but we try to get them there. Right. Okay. Lauren, let's talk about community. We, ne we know we need to support people. We need to remove stigma from mental health issues and addiction issues. Tell me about kind of the layers of support that we need to employ to lift people up. Sure. So one of the arguments that we make a lot to anyone who will listen is that the really the lowest hanging fruit and the highest potential return on investment in combating the opioid epidemic and addiction broadly is helping to keep people who are in early recovery in recovery for the long term. Mm -hmm. The one thing that people who die of overdoses, people who are incarcerated, and folks who are living in homeless encampments all have in common is that with very few exceptions, they were all at one point in recovery, and our system failed to keep them in recovery. And so there's this huge catalog that we call recovery support services that really buoy people and help them transition to lifelong recovery. And those include recovery housing, uh, recovery coaching services like Eva talked about, intentional communities like Recovery Cafe, education and employment opportunities, uh, technological recovery supports like innovative apps, as well as transportation, childcare, and importantly, family education about how to support a loved one in recovery. Yeah. Yeah, especially that, I would imagine. Ruby, let's talk about personal empowerment for the person who's in recovery. Um, thanks for asking. It's such a great question, and it comes up a lot. And our view is we try to um, remember that recovery is about extending an, an invitation and saying to the person, we're here, we want to support you, and um, we want to hear, we're here now, and we'll be here when you get back, knowing that recovery is an up and down, um, difficult journey. And so part of the, the program, if I understand it, is to emphasize action, goals, and work to enable people to get better. How does that work? You know, the, the biggest piece of that is to have a relationship uh, that empowers honest conversation about what that person has in front of them right that minute. Because my goal today will be different tomorrow, will be different than Lauren's mm -hmm. goal or different than Eva's. So meeting a person where they're at, I've used someone someone said that, is really the conversation that has to happen at the beginning so that we can support, is it housing? Is it reconnection with family? Is it medical care? Is it food? What are the, the barriers to helping you stay in recovery is the, the primary conversation. And that will change over time as needs are met and people get stability. Um, that makes sense. That makes very good sense. You can't jump to the end, right? You right. have to do the next goal in order. Eva, as a member of the recovery uh, community, tell me a little bit about what it means to make a lifetime commitment to recovery and staying on that path. It means I have a future now, whereas before I never had a future. And I'm able to wake up in the morning and do something better than I did yesterday. I can actually make goals today and know that I can accomplish them. Um, that's something that I never had before. How do people access recovery supports? 
I just want to echo Eva is so on target that it's about relationship and being available for people to ask questions for them to know that you're on their journey yourselves and they are free and without stigma able to ask you questions and word of mouth is our best support in the community and making sure people are, are free to ask questions. So in terms of recovery housing, our largest provider of recovery housing in the state is Oxford House. Uh, and so yes. they actually have a website where you can find out availability in different Oxford houses. Similarly, uh, there's another organization called the Washington Alliance for Quality Recovery Residences. Uh, WAQRR.org is their website. And they also have a, a catalog of vetted quality recovery housing in the state. And one innovation that we're working on specifically related to recovery coaching and how to access those services is actually the concept of having recovery coaches in the emergency department so mm -hmm. that when a person presents to the emergency department in crisis for an infected abscess or an overdose or sepsis or MRSA or suicidality because of uh, addiction or mental health challenges that we actually meet them in that point of need at their bedside with a recovery coach uh, who can really deal in the currency of hope and motivation and be that conduit to resources and actually do the follow-up to make sure that they're not just handed a piece of paper with numbers, but that they actually have a warm handoff to treatment and then support when they get out of treatment. That's been uh, piloted successfully in other states and we're really looking to bring that here to Washington. When do you think that might happen? Well, with some support from the state legislature, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. If you or anyone you know is looking for help with addiction, please visit the website on your screen, roadtorecoverys.org, or you can call or text the Washington State Problem Gambling Helpline 24-7.